So in this video, I wanna talk about my long-term review of the M1 MacBook Air. Scratch that, it's so weird when people say long-term review and it's only been like three months. Let me try again. <clears throat> in this video, I wanna talk about the extended time I've had with the MacBook Air M1. I'm basically saying the same thing, let's just get into it. So this is the M1 MacBook Air with the eight CPU and seven GPU variant because personally, I don't see the value in the extra GPU core and many of you won't either. Um, I also have the 256 gigabyte of storage because external storage is a thing, but if you value having internal stuff and not carrying around an extra storage device that you may end up losing, then the 512 gigabyte option is a good buy. And finally, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM in this machine or unified memory. So the total came out to be $1,079. Keep in mind this laptop is cheaper than the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So what's it like using the base M1 chip in the MacBook Air with no fan? So several months later, this laptop still puts a smile on my face every time I open it and use it. Usually when you purchase something new, you're excited for about a few weeks to a month and then it starts to wear off. But with this M1 MacBook, it's still that good. It just makes me happy every time I use it. This laptop is so good that I don't even wanna put effort into reviewing the Razorbook 13 because this laptop is superior in almost every way. Almost, and I'll touch on that at the end of the video. You see, this laptop is great, and I'm sure for many reviewers, it's a hard laptop to beat, especially at the price point, but there are a few things that have annoyed me, especially after using high-end MacBook Pros and Windows laptops. So most of the competition has Thunderbolt on either side, and the MacBook Air still has it on the same side. So, right, yeah, good job, engineers. So if you want to use this with multiple monitors, unfortunately you can't because the Air is limited to just using one external monitor. And since it's not an Intel chip, there are a few applications that simply don't work yet, even with Rosetta 2 being out. How I wish Tableau worked so I can make beautiful charts with my data. For some reason, apps randomly crash, mainly Spotify, like I just want to enjoy my Michael Jackson marathon and Kendrick Lamar session in peace. Also, Kendrick, can you um, drop another album? It's getting pretty rough out here, but hey, if it takes 10 years, I can wait. Take your time. Other than that, that's all I can really pick out for negatives. And I guess you can say no touchscreen, but like I said in my Big Sur video, I have a feeling touchscreens will be coming soon to the MacBook lineup. So the question you might be asking or thinking or not, uh, why didn't I just get the MacBook Pro? So for one, there are things that I buy for the channel and things that I would personally buy for myself. Yes, I could have spec'd out a nice MacBook Pro and count, count it as like a tax write-off, but personally, I wouldn't even know what to do with all that stuff, and most of the stuff on the Pro is kind of unnecessary for me. And more importantly, the defining component in this machine is the chip itself, and it's pretty much the same across the board as of now with the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini. Um, the biggest factor for me was the design, even though it is subtle. Uh, the tapered design, of the MacBook Air is what I prefer other than the boxy design of the MacBook Pro. Um, it's objective, but I do feel like the typing experience is better on the MacBook Air because of the um, wedge-shaped design. And it's easier to carry around and do like crazy stuff like this, you know, like I do in my videos. But uh, it's also lighter. I can't really tell the difference between the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air, but you know, that, I guess that's something that you can differentiate on paper um, but overall it's really just very subtle differences um, i could have gotten a touch bar i would have loved to get the touch bar on the macbook pro but i'm completely fine with having my regular function row key the only reason i can see people going for the pro is for the battery life the battery life is significantly better in the pro almost double in some instances and the air's battery life is already good enough for me but if battery life is a concern for you on the go, the Pro is the better option. So if you guys are curious, this is the Icon Skin by MKBHD and Dbrand. Use my affiliate link down below. I'm just kidding. There's no affiliate link, but top, bottom, and trackpad. I tried the inside skin before. I wouldn't suggest it. Dbrand, don't kill me for potentially lowering your sales on the MacBook skins. But yeah, skins, I would definitely say is a plus. So what about performance? So this is a topic I probably should have started with at the beginning of the video, but the performance is incredible. For the price you pay, it's 100% worth it. Um, people ask me commonly in the comments, if commonly in the comments, if it's good enough for editing, 
yes, especially if you use Apple apps like iMovie or um, Final Cut Pro. Pixelmator Pro is also butter smooth. Um, I can edit 4K videos, no problem. Um, you have people like iJustine editing 8K footage without any drops as well, so. It's running quite well on here. What the heck? If you're editing in 1080, I think you'll be more than happy with the performance that you can get in iMovie. Um, Adobe might be a different story, but they are trying to convert their applications to be native with the M1 chip. So it's a gamble if that's the application that you end up using for um, video editing purposes. Um, I said this before and I'll say it again, the no fan is a game changer and it may be hard to convince you, but once you use a machine that's silent and performs on par or better than a machine that runs loud or audible, you start to appreciate the quietness a machine produces. That doesn't make any sense. You start to appreciate how silent a machine is. Yeah, that sounds right. So people always make the joke that their laptop sounds like a jet taking off. And in comparison, the M1 MacBook Air sounds like the audience after I finish my jokes silent. This machine is phenomenal and Apple has really outdone themselves since it uses so little wattage. In my experience, my laptop gets warm at most, nothing too uncomfortable. The only time I feel it getting hot and I go like, <sighs> poor baby. It's mainly when I'm exporting and most of the time I'm already busy watching TV in the living room or like cooking dinner or something. So is this laptop still a buy? It depends because this laptop isn't for everyone. Like I said before, there are some apps that straight up don't work, even with Rosetta. So if your job or side gig depends on that app, you're out of luck. Gamers, our time has not yet come yet to game on a Mac. Window is still king. Do not let Apple's marketing team tell you otherwise. Remember when I said this laptop is almost superior in every single way than the Razer Book 13? That goes for almost any Windows laptop at the same price point or above, because no matter how fantastic this M1 MacBook is, Windows laptops are still just as good and there's a marker for them. Apple may be jabbing at Intel, but it's personally Apple's choice just to go with their own CPU architecture instead. And they may have ruffled feathers in the tech industry, but until we see consistent year after year improvement, Windows laptops, whether Intel or AMD, will have a performance difference of maybe like 10 to 15 percent. And for non-professionals, you probably won't notice a difference. Um, I will say though, for AMD chips specifically, you may notice just better performance overall, but do keep in mind, it probably consumes more wattage as well. Um, if you intend to play any AAA game, I recommend getting a Windows machine or just buy a console. Yeah, they're still sold out. So if you want everything to work out the box with no hiccups, minus Windows just being Windows and glitching half the time, a Windows laptop is the better option. I know the new M1X or whatever new thing that's coming out is going to be rumored to be amazing, but the only regret you may have is the redesign because the performance already is amazing and I'm, I'm perfectly happy with my machine. Like I said before, I think Apple really nailed it and this product will age really well as time goes on for people's needs. However, I always say if you can wait, be patient and wait and see what comes out next. But if you are in need of a laptop, then buy what's available and be happy with it. The MacBook Air is a thumbs up for me for my extended long-term review. So I appreciate every sub, like, and comment. And as always, guys, much love. Also, you guys might be curious why I keep looking this way. Let me, let me get the camera. So yeah, I'm just looking outside, nothing major, nothing special. It's not like I have like a zoo or a circus going on. It's just, you know, the sky, that's it. But yeah, sub and dislike.